Good morning, ladies. Thanks for being here. My name is Stefania Costanza. I am the Consul General of Italy here in Mumbai and actually one of your neighbors since my office is here in Kanjanjanga building. Uh, I would like to thank the Sofia College for hosting us today. I would like to thank the Italian Trade Commissioner for arranging it and of course our superstar for today which is the Istituto Italiano di Design, the Italian Design Institute. The reason why I asked to be present today and, and to have some time with you to interact is because you will listen to many beautiful ideas, elements, programs, um, plans for your future life that might uh, comprehend also Italy and the Istituto Italiano del Design. But I also would like to tell you something about Italy more in general. Have you ever traveled to Italy so far? Great, so this is why I'm here. So Italy is uh, very well known for, for fashion, for design. I have to add to, for research and development. And this is something that it is in, encrypted in our DNA. This is who we are. It is not something that you um, learn because you have to, but it's a passion that you develop. And it is all around you. It is exactly the same that you experience here in India, where beauty is all over around you. And, uh, and I can see from, from the beauty of your earrings, madam, the beauty of your henne, uh, the beauty of the colors that you're wearing, that you are absolutely emerged in the very same framework and ambience as we do. So we share that very much among many other things. Your ability, the, the ability that I saw, uh, that I experienced in India in crafting things, it is exactly the same that we have. We just find a way years back to make it special. And this is where going to study uh, in Italy really add a plus to sum up what you already have in your DNA, what you already know, and really make it special to another level. Italy is in Europe, is a Mediterranean country. It has a um, shape that is very much similar to the Indian one. So there are long coastline emerged into the sea. We do have mountains on top, as you have, as India has. And, um, and we also share almost the same colors of our national flag. You have saffron, we have red. But then it's white and green, as it is, as it is for you. Italy is a G7 country, so it's one, one of the seven largest economies in the world. It's the second largest manufacturing country in Europe. And it is still the sixth manufacturing country across the world. Italy is part of the European Union. You might heard that unfortunately the European uh, countries, European Union countries, a uh, few weeks back, a few days back actually, shrink down from 27 to, uh, to from 28 to 27 because of Brexit. So Great Britain is of course geographically European, but it is not inside the European Union anymore. Being a, a country belonging to the EU means to have freedom of movement and access to a market of 600 million consumers, not only people. So whatever you will produce, design, imaging, create in Italy could go to all the other 26 countries with no duties of import and export. 
This is why we take pride to be one, not the only one, but definitely one of the gateways to Europe for the Indian students. This is demonstrated also by the fact that we do have around 5,000 Indian students present in Italy every year. In 2019, we issued 5,500 visas for study. And 80% uh, of, of those has been made by my office around the corner. Because in the south of India, you have more um, ability to think yourself in a different way, in a different place, uh, following different path. I would like to add that Italy is a safe place. Um, there's still a long way to go, like everywhere else. Um, but the thing that I represent Italy, and I am a woman here, it says, how about liberal? Our country is compared to others. There is a very large Indian community living in Italy permanently, apart from the students. Uh, that means, good morning, madam. <laughs> no, not at all, thanks. Yes. I try to be disciplined, which is not exactly my strong point. Um, I was saying there's a large uh, community, Indian community, living permanently in Italy, just to um, make the point that how easy it is to interact. So the Indian community is the largest foreign community in Italy. Last count was 150,000 citizens living in Italy, which makes Italy the host country for the largest Indian community on continental Europe. So after UK, you find the largest number of Indian citizens living in Europe in Italy. Because again, we do share a lot and it is very easy uh, to, um, to work together and live together. Italy is by nature a vegetarian country and this is because not for uh, specific reasons other than meat and fish were very expensive uh, especially in the past and we were not a rich country so we could not afford to have meat and fish every day or on every meal. So the basic, the traditional essence of our cuisine is vegetarian. So you can have the best vegetarian food just having the regional dishes that you'll find in every restaurant, which makes it very attractive. Italy is also the country that hosts the largest number of UNESCO sites. Uh, India has many and exactly like Italy, Italy and India shares also the fact of having some UNESCO cultural heritage that is not material, is immaterial one. For India, just to name one is yoga, for Italy is pizza. <laughs> and they both belong to the whole humankind. So I think we should be very proud that we, are, we give to the rest of the world something that comes from our, our really inner side. At the roots of our culture, we share uh, millennial culture. Culture go ba back for thousands of years. At the roots of our culture, there are two amazing uh, books, stories, that tells about our religion, our tradition, who we are. In the case of India, there are Mahabharata and Ramayana. And in the case of Italy, there is Iliade and Odyssea. Uh, you will discover more once you come and, and, and live in my country uh, about that. Um, 
I feel very much at home here. I spent two and a half years now in Mumbai, and I feel very much privileged in having the chance to serve my own country here. Uh, in Mumbai, in your beautiful country, I've been welcomed, and I keep being welcomed by everyone. I find so many similarities, and what I really hope to have is to contribute bringing together more bridges. We do need bridges. We do need people that are able to understand both culture and so link up between us. You, with your work, with your ideas, with your talent, might be one of those. So this is why I really wanted, I insisted on being here today and try to send this message to you. Also because once you will, be con once you will uh, have clear in mind that you want to go to, to study in Italy and invest part of your talent in my country, you will have to get a visa for that. Visa is not a barrier. Visa is a path that brings you to the other side. It's something that you have to, you can try to cross a river in any point you prefer, but it's not really, um, you cannot take it for granted that in doing so you will arrive to the, to the bank in front of you. While with the visa, again, it's a bridge. If you follow the path, you will definitely get the visa there. So this is extremely important for me because it's a way we have of working together. The process is not always easy, as you probably have heard. It's not easy if you want to go to study abroad anyway, to the US or Australia or Canada. It is not easy for us if we want to, if an Italian student wants to come and study in India, or an Italian student wants to go and study in the US. But it's, it's absolutely not impossible. It's just a matter of following all the paperwork criteria that you have to fulfill. So another reason why I wanted to um, be here today is to let you know that when, if, when, you will decide uh, to apply for a study visa, I'll be super happy to have someone guiding you and helping you out in telling you what are the papers that are needed and uh, what are the requirements. I will not bore you today <laughs> with those details. We can go through that in a different moment. What it is important is just to let you know that the Istituto Italiano del Design is one of the Italian excellence. Uh, Italy, like India, has many points of excellence. This is one. It is in a very special region, centric in Italy, from Perugia, which is an historic, beautiful place. You can travel all over uh, Italy very easily by train. Uh, it's, uh, Perugia is um, a very nice, uh, small, small city compared, uh, let's say, to our standards. So probably for you it will be like a small village size. <laughs> Um, full of students because this is, there's a long tradition of universities and institutions so you will find lots of hundreds of students coming from all over all over Italy and also all over the world also because Perugia hosts another excellence of Italy which is the University for Foreigners of Perugia the so-called in Italian Università per gli stranieri di Perugia this is where people from all over the world come to study Italian so you can be sure you will not feel abandoned or lonely uh, I promise that. The landscape is beautiful, it's always been a source of inspiration for whom, like you, want to create. There are fantastic stories about mostly uh, very special women that right after or during the Second World War in Italy, where all the men went fighting and, and, and were drawn, unfortunately somewhere else, kept things going and imagined, projected, 
and gave birth to some of the most important trademarks, labels in Italy. One for all is Luisa Spagnoli. It has a fantastic personal story around that. So hopefully you will be interested. This is not, uh, this is not even Italy in a nutshell. This is just uh, something that I hope will uh, turn on your curiosity for more questions, for ideas, for your personal research. And uh, I am really pleased to leave the floor with uh, Ms. Risolo, who will tell you everything about this institute and what, can, what, ca what could they do for you if you decide to, again, invest your talent uh, in their place. Thank you. Grazie. Um, this is Benedetta Risolo, the Head of uh, International Relations at Istituto Italiano Design in Perugia, Italy. I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Gignasta for uh, allowing coming here, for inviting here today to speak with you. And of course, uh, I would like to thank our Italian consulate, Stefania Costanza, for um, the beautiful words uh, about Indian and Italian connections that we want for sure to explore today. I would get started with a video. I am here because I would like to give you an outlook, an insight of fashion industry today with a specific focus on the Indian and Italian markets. This is our today agenda. Um, so first, what should we care about the fashion and design? Then I would like to speak about uh, the opportunities that you should get if you want to decide to come to Italy for further studies in fashion and design. And then uh, I'd like to go on with uh, the main issues, the main challenges that Italian fashion and uh, worldwide fashion is facing today. So let's get started. Fashion industry worldwide accounts alone for three trillions United States dollars, which is a lot, but if we look specifically at the Indian market, the, the data, data say that by 2020, the uh, apparel industry will account uh, itself uh, for almost 60 billion of United, uh, United States dollars. And uh, 300 of new branded shops are going to be open here in India, which means a lot of opportunities for you, for young fashion designers to be. So at the end, it's not that bad industry to get involved too. This is the first answer that we are going to give, seeing the data, but there's something more actually. There's something more that deals with the deep humankind nature. When we, when go, when we get back home from our working day, from our studying day, what would we like to find? Just a shelter to be in? I don't think. I think that you want something which look, looks good, 
something which is good looking and beautiful, where you can be comfortable in. So, at the end, not just a shelter, but a, a design place. Okay, then also we, when we get up during the morning, we don't just want to cover up. We don't pick up random clothes, piece of garments, and we cover up ourselves, no. We want to look beautiful, we want to look pretty, we want to look good. So, the design and fashion, in the end, these two big markets, they respond, fulfill a human need, which is the desire of having beauty in our lives. And when it comes to beauty, when it comes to fashion and design, at least uh, this is the data from a US magazine uh, um, survey, people say that Italy is the place to be because Italy is deemed as the most fashionable country all over the world. So this, this is our first uh, answer. But let's get on, let's move on. The world, the entire world, uh, admire Italy for uh, made in Italy products. They look for in made in Italy products, uh, seek for made in Italy products. Why this happens? Due to the confidence uh, in the quality, high quality, of our Italian products. Where this confidence comes from? Um, this confidence comes from uh, mainly two things, uh, culture and tradition. Culture, which means that products in Italy are full of beauty, art, uh, full of movements, cultural movements, and uh, tradition, because they are also a mix uh, with ha manual skills, uh, hand skills, uh, handicraft, um, and uh, for sure, passion. So these two things, uh, they make uh, Made in Italy products uh, so good, uh, and they make uh, Made in Italy the first brand uh, all around the world. Let's see. Let's start from the culture. We have said culture and tradition. Culture. Culture means uh, that uh, from the ancient Rome, from the ancient architecture, Italy has had this uh, special culture of beauty, okay? And from the very beginning, from the ancient Rome, if we go on and if we move to the 20th century, we see that a lot of uh, art, uh, cultural movements, uh, such as Novecento Italiano, Arte Povera, um, rationalism, um, futurism, they all took place in Italy. So, again, Italy is the place to be because it's rich in culture. And culture is uh, something which inspires uh, all over the world the design and fashion market at the international level. Here you will find uh, two items uh, which are not just simple items, are something more. These two items are uh, the arch lamp of Achille Castiglioni design, and this is the Alessi design for squeezing the orange juice. So these two items are the symbol of made in Italy all over the world. Let's see an evidence of what I'm saying, that culture is in Italy. All these events, uh, you can think about the Salone del Mobile exhibition, you can think about Pitti Filati, knitting, uh, fashion show in Florence, and then Milan Fashion Week, Altaroma Fashion Week, and so on. All these events uh, that inspire the entire world of design and fashion all over the world, they take place in Italy. So again, Italy, when it comes to fashion and design, is the place to be. Because of the culture, culture leads to all these events uh, thanks to all the currents, the movements that we have had and we are still having. And this is uh, something which makes uh, Italy an historic leader and current trendsetter. Let's move on the tradition side. We have spoken about the culture, let's, spoke, uh, let's speak a little bit about the tradition. Italy is the, the most fashionable uh, country in the world. So Italy Mainly, it's, it's full of beauty. Let's see a small slice of this beauty. The Italian consulate was speaking about Perugia, of Umbria, which is very not 
well advertise it and I would like to take you around a little bit. This is Perugia. It's a middle-aged city. Full of festival. This is our chocolate. This is the University for Foreigners that the consulate was speaking about. Full of it, um, international students. This is the city center. We are just quite there. And Perugia, Umbria, is the green heart of Italy because it's full of green areas, woods, forests, a season, beautiful spiritual place. And festival, this is Umbria Jazz. One month of music for free, any day, any time, wherever. Perugia, Spello, Spoleto, anywhere, any place. They play in the street, a lot of concert. Tony Bennett, Lady Gaga, Santana, Prince, Bruce Springsteen, all coming to Perugia for Umbria Jazz. So definitely it's not a bad place where to see something. This is a slice of Perugia. This is a Sisi. Then we have a lot of small towns, middle-aged towns to see green areas, festival. This is Umbria Jazz. This is the city center of Perugia during July when there's a lot of music everywhere. They play in the street and people follow them playing in the street. This is our chocolate. They scrape these chocolate sculptures in the street in the way and they, while sculpturing, they give for free the chocolate they don't use. And you you don't imagine people that cra uh, people get crazy. Years ago, I was about to take my chocolate for free. I was about like this uh, after like uh, 20 minutes uh, uh, waiting for just a small piece of chocolate. Then I was like this, uh, and from the back, suddenly, a 95 years old granny fetched the chocolate like this. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. It's very. Careful. So, why should you come to study to Umbria specifically? We have seen there's a lot of uh, life, there's a lot of festivals, but let's see, there's more. Not only beauty, but also there's a big textile tradition. Let's see, from the beginning. I would like to speak about Umbria and the closest Tuscany, which is one hour away from Perugia, which is Scandici district. Scandici and Perugia, Umbria, they have uh, two big uh, traditions. The tradition of knitting, uh, of knitwear uh, and tailoring uh, first, and then the tradition of uh, leatherwork, uh, accessories, uh, shoes making, uh, and so on. So these two dictators are very important when it comes to fashion industry. Let's see, from the very beginning, in the 12th century, Umbria, uh, was the place where they produce, used to produce tapestries, tablecloths uh, with these ancient looms. And what is more, they made it uh, in very awesome places. So speaking about uh, uh, very beautiful churches, uh, ancient palace, you know, in Perugia city center, any palace actually is an historic palace. Also our main um, campus is located in a 15th century building, a fresco building. So again, rich in beauty. This is an example of what I'm saying. This is the Atelier Brozzetti Museum. Atelier Brozzetti Museum is a textile place and it's both a museum and a workplace. They have intern every, uh, every month, so they still produce these amazing textile fabrics. Let's move on. We started from the very beginning, but let's see what happened in the 20th century. In the 20th century, Tradition, handicraft, manual skills, they met industrialization. This union between the handicraft and the possibilities offered by the industrialization led Umbria to be a, bloom, a blooming place for um, factories, for companies. So a lot of companies were born in that time. 
One of these companies is ECAP. A question for you. Have you ever heard about ECAP? I don't think. Have you ever heard, indeed, about Giorgio Armani? I guess. So, ECAP company in 1947 first produced the garments in knitting of this guy, Giorgio Armani, this elegant and smart guy. So it was the first company launching his special products and producing his special garments. In the, in the 70, later on, Umberto Ginocchetti company was born. This special company was uh, uh, preserving the manual skills uh, and uh, delivering, giving uh, the clients uh, for the first time a very finished product uh, to the high fashion houses also. So he used to start uh, from the very beginning, from the raw material, from the fabrics, from the rows, and then he moved uh, to the stitching part, to the tailoring part, uh, and then knitting, knitting obviously, and uh, he used to deliver a finished, already finished product, which when it comes to the high fashion houses, uh, it's not something that you should take for granted because uh, in the past, uh, the fashion houses, uh, they didn't have this uh, uh, finish, uh, ready to wear products. They only had the, the tradition to tailor everything. So he started first producing uh, the luxury prêt porter the luxury ready, ready to wear. What happened? That Umbria experienced the exceptional entrepreneurs, such as Luisa Spagnoli, the consulate was mentioning. And then we have Aleste, La Font, E.G. So what happened? That when industrialization, coming from the tradition, meets high quality, because they preserved the manual skills so good, leads to have a very desirable product. So what happened? A lot of companies from out of Italy, they heard about this amazing product made in Italy in Umbria products, and they started demanding for having these products. So they, um, as a process of internationalization started in the 20th century. So offices were open in Paris, in Dusseldorf, in London also, Germany, and very big international companies came to Umbria, breaking the monopoly of the British when it came to um, the, the cashmere and knitting. So this guy, this is Umberto Ginocchetti, um, and uh, in the 70s, the 80s, you have to think that if you were in Germany and if you were to buy a pullover from a high fashion brands, high fashion brands, 95% that that pullover was produced in Umbria by this guy, by Umberto Ginocchetti company. To give you an idea of how the quality was high. <clears throat> so in Umbria, we have this perfect example of made in Italy, products combining culture and craft, manual skills, tradition, then leading to the industrialization, preserving the high quality of the manual skills, and then started being exported. So industrialization led to the internationalization. All this led Umbria to be a very important hub for the textile industry. More than 500 companies were born in Umbria, and more than, we have more than 2,000 highly specialized employees in this textile sector. You have to think that Umbria is very small, so these numbers are huge for Umbria. Umbria now produce, produces brands such as Gucci, Dior, Hermes, Ralph Lauren, Balmain Paris. What would you think about if I say Balmain Paris? What city does come to your mind? What city? Balmain, Paris. Paris, I guess, France. And if I tell you that we have Balmain, Paris, one hour away from Perugia, these are some of our students. And we are in the Balmain, Paris headquarters, one hour away from Perugia. You see. So they produce the accessories of Balmain, Paris, one hour away from Perugia. So the quality is very high. 
This is uh, other um, companies of the um, Perugia and uh, Scandici districts. They are into leather. They are into leather, and um, they sell these uh, amazing uh, high-quality products uh, to the high fashion houses. Let's see some uh, uh, history, some case histories. The Italian consulate mentioned Luisa Spagnoli. Luisa Spagnoli is a very special businesswoman. She started with the chocolate, so this is why Perugia is the city of chocolate, so why do we have um, Euro Chocolate Festival. This is uh, the chocolate kiss that she made up, and um, um, from the chocolate she moved to the fashion industry, started producing the garments. Which type of garments? She was very innovative at that time especially, and she had this uh, idea um, that the wool, the, sorry, the fur of this uh, type of rabbit, with it, which is Angora rabbit, uh, was so soft and so perfect for producing garments, so for producing pullover. So she started raising in her factory this type of rabbits. This is to uh, show you um, a piece of the international presence uh, in Europe and in Asia here of Luisa Spagnoli brand uh, all over the world. All these uh, uh, shops, all these stores. Luisa Spagnoli, there's uh, something also to, to say, because when uh, uh, the World Wide War burnt, uh, all the men left uh, for fighting for their country, for, Ita for Italy. So what happened? She had no one left in the factory, in the firm. So, two options. First option, let's close up the factory. But she didn't like this option, actually. So let's think about something else, something different. She started hiring all the wives left home from the husbands, which nowadays, it sounds very sensible, but you have to think that in that time, in the past, it was very innovative for a businesswoman to think like this. So she started hiring all the women, but there was a problem, because all the women had children, sons and daughters left home. So, how to solve this problem? She started creating, foreseeing an area in the factory for the children care. So, the wives could come to work in, in a relaxed um, state of mind, because they can, they could carry the children, the son and daughters, because there was a specific area where to live the children and the daughters. So we can see Nicoletta Spagnoli. She is uh, uh, the Spagnoli CEO, and uh, she is uh, in the mansion of Istituto Italiano Design releasing an interview. The interview is in Italian, but what she is saying uh, is that the main challenge that she had to face uh, in her life was when the father passed away. Because in that time, in that moment, specific moment, she had immediately, suddenly, to turn from a simple, ordinary employee into a manager. So she's speaking also about the difficulty that uh, still uh, women uh, face in, uh, in our, um, in our uh, society. <laughs> più importante, quella più grossa, è quando eh, a, nel 1986 è venuto a mancare mio padre e io da semplice disegnatrice, perché ero alcuni anni, lavoravo con lui, ma disegnavo e basta, timbravo il cartellino, quindi da semplice impiegata, sono diventata amministratore delegato. She said what I have said to you. So these are the data of another very famous brand, which is uh, Brunello Cucinelli. Brunello Cucinelli is into luxury cashmere, luxury knitting, and this guy, this amazing guy, is also from Perugia. So the main headquarters of Brunello Cucinelli company is in Perugia. These are some of the um, data, but um, this is maybe more interesting. It's uh, uh, a piece of the uh, prizes, the awards that this young man received so far in his life for being an exceptional entrepreneur in the textile market, textile industry. This is a, a, um, a shot of the presence, international presence of this brand in the US and in the South America. And here we have Brunello Cucinelli 
nowadays uh, um, attending the International Luxury Conference of New York Times in New York. We, uh, here we have something different. We have uh, Brunello Cucinelli, we are the founder of Istituto Italiano Design, Anna Maria, and they are in the headquarters of uh, Brunello Cucinelli in Perugia. And here, this is a very ancient picture, we have uh, a young uh, 21st, 22 years old Brunello Cucinelli with uh, this guy. This guy is Alfredo. Alfredo teaches at Istituto Italiano Design. They were friends, uh, they worked together, but what is more is that Alfredo also worked um, in ECAP company. You remember ECAP launching Giorgio Armani? Exactly, so he worked, uh, he met his friends uh, uh, actually with Giorgio Armani also. Alfredo graduated in Switzerland, then uh, uh, in textile engineering, and then he graduated at Columbia University in New York and spent 50 years of his life uh, as a manager of the main fashion brands. So Salvatore Ferragamo, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and so on. Then uh, after retiring in Perugia, he started uh, uh, teaching for Istituto Italiano Design because he likes teaching. So he is the director of our master in fashion management. Let's get back to our agenda, today's agenda. We have spoken about fashion industry, design industry. We have, we have seen why you should come to Italy to learn some more about fashion industry. Let's move to the new challenges that fashion industry is nowadays facing. And I saw something here outside eh, that you are already aware about the fashion industry challenges today. Any, anything comes to your mind? What is the main uh, issue that fashion industry is, has to face uh, as uh, any industry today? Excuse me? Sustainab sustainability. Exactly. Sustainability. So fast, uh, the answer? Yes. I'd like to show you something. The industry of fashion is, as you already know, one of the most polluting industry ever. So, especially if you are into fashion, you have to be very sensitive about this problem, this big issue. Also, the United Nations are so concerned, deeply concerned, so they made out, they made up these 17 SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, which are the main guidelines that also Istituto Italiano Design is following for assigning the projects, the academic projects to the students. It's very important to be sensitive. So we have uh, quality education, we have climate change, we have uh, uh, gender equality, and then we have for sure sustainability, recycling and sustainability. Do you have an idea of uh, the water that you should have for producing a single pair of jeans? Eh? Any idea of the amount? More or less. One glass of water, one bottle of water, two bottles, ten bottles. Seven luck? Ah, seven gallons. Okay, liters. I have to think a little bit. This is the amount. Okay, very well prepared. <laughs> so this is the amount of water you would waste with a single pair of jeans because cotton is very water intensive crop. This is the same amount that a single person would drink in 10 years. It's a lot of water. So we have to think about some alternative options. Do you know where the clothes in your wardrobe come from? Not just if they're from the high street or if your covers are packed with designer labels, but what they're made of. Do they come from materials that are harming the planet? Are our clothes just a mirror reflection of what is happening to our environment? Hi, I'm Michelle Liu. I like to look good, not only for the red carpet, but in everyday life. The connection between our clothes and their impact on the environment doesn't immediately come to mind. If a jacket or a skirt or a dress looks good, and if we can afford it, we buy it. But the environment pays the price. I'm going to find out 
what sustainable fashion could look like without compromising the beauty of our clothes. The United Nations promotes a better future for people and the planet through a global effort known as the Sustainable Development Goals. So I've come to the UN's office in Geneva to learn more about what some are calling an environmental emergency in the garment industry. The environmental impact of the fashion industry is actually immense, and a large part of that is the production of textiles. Manufacturing of clothes is very water intensive and releases high levels of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The fashion industry generates around 10% of global carbon emissions. That's more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. It is also one of the world's biggest users of water and produces around 20% of global waste water. It takes up to 10,000 liters of water to produce just one kilo of cotton, enough to make a single pair of denim jeans. That's as much water as a human being drinks over the course of 10 years. When we wash synthetic fibers, the other most commonly used materials, they release microplastics into our rivers, which end up polluting the oceans. With clothing more affordable and more available than ever before, is it time to move on from throwaway fashion? Today, with fast and cheap production, 85% of textiles end up in landfills or are incinerated. So, what's the alternative? Forests can provide part of the solution using the latest technology to produce wood-based fibers for our clothes. Of course, this has to go hand in hand with sustainable forest management. If we are to use forest products, we need to make sure that forests remain healthy and continue to grow. So fashion out of forest is possible and sustainable. Let's see how it looks like. We are traveling to Vienna in Italy, so I can see for myself if clothing that has little impact on the environment can look as good or even better than the ones we are all used to. I'm choosing a design for a dress and jacket to be made from natural wood based fibers. My dress and jacket will be made to order here in Chita del Arte, a place where artists come together to explore connections between their work and broader social issues. Its founder is the world-renowned artist Michelangelo Pistoletto. Fashion is very important because it's bringing the aesthetic into the society. But for me, it's not enough. We have also to bring the ethic. Designer Tiziano Guardini represents precisely this greater awareness of ethics and production that a young generation of creative artists bring to the fashion industry. I've picked this design. I love the simplicity, but at the same time, when you go in, you see the details. But explain to me the whole process. I use only a sustainability uh, material because for me it's important to think about uh, our future. And the second step uh, is research topics uh, that uh, can explain my idea. Tiziano works with wood based fibers that use, on average, 60 times less water compared to cotton and produce 15 times fewer carbon emissions than synthetic fibers. Wood chips from certified sustainable forests are processed into pulp, reduced to a viscous solution that produces fibers. And ultimately, these are turned into thread, which creates soft and silky materials with a light footprint on the environment. Smart fashion from sustainable sources is already widely available, and not only from high-end designers. It is also affordable. As we insist for our clothes to be produced sustainably, more and more brands are quickly joining this new trend.
and uh, then in Italy they do a lot of research. They are very avant garde and specialized in the research about the, the sustainable fashion. But I'd like to I'd like to show you also Istituto Italiano Design answer to this uh, big issue, this uh, polluting and uh, um, sustainably recast uh, issue. This is a project of some years ago called the 3F, Forest for Fashion. Communication course uh, work along with all the department, fashion course, interior course, they work together on the same project assignment. And they made this video with the motion graphic techniques to communicate the idea of a sustainable garments collection, capsule collection. So they, before designing, they did a lot of research about the innovative materials on the market, available on the market, coming to the leather of mushroom, uh, cork, hemp, and they used that materials, those materials. So forests providing the solution from the, for the fashion industry. The logo made, up, made uh, um, done by the communication course also. And this, this video is uh, done with the stop motion technique, which is uh, all pictures, uh, all photographs, uh, put into the laptop and they put them alive. This is a storytelling. There's this student, she's a designer, she's a fashion designer. She's doing her homework for the capture collections, but she has no, she has no inspiration. She doesn't like what she is drawing and she throw it away. Then she receives a phone call and she gets out of the room. So, suddenly, something happened. Someone came into the room. It's the nature. Something is taking its own life. It's nature, it's a leaf that the wind is blowing into the room and this leaf is there, she is saying, please take me into account, take me into consideration, see me. So what happens? She gets back, she sees the leaf, the advice of the nature, and she starts designing something which is sustainable, respectful of the forest, respectful of our environment, our planet. So this is also a storytelling which wants to claim that a designer, a creative person, can take inspiration from the tiny detail, from any little item, like a leaf. So we worked on this capture collection with an NGO, which is PFC. They have the main office in Switzerland, in Geneva. In Geneva, in Geneva. And uh, um, what we did is, uh, after the research, uh, producing this capture collection made of cork, made of hemp, uh, all 100% sustainable material, natural material. So we have uh, a technical sheet, some of the materials that after the research they used, and we have uh, a shot of the capture collection. Here we are uh, in the National Gallery of Arts, which is our partner, and we used to uh, showcasing, we used to showcase there our capture collection at the end of the year. Here we have something different. This capture collection, the same one, but in the United Nations headquarters in Geneva. 
because the message was so strong that they decided to bring the capture collection of our designers, our students, uh, all over the world uh, at the United Nations headquarters to give the right message that the environment in the fashion industry is important. So the capture collection has uh, brought to here in Geneva, in the reg regional forum of sustainable development, uh, then in New York, uh, political forum of United Nations, then Nairobi for the conference on the environment, and then also to uh, the UNICE FAO forestry sector in Rome. Just to give you the idea, if the message is strong and it's worth it, you tell the message, the message goes everywhere. So, uh, this is, uh, these are the guidelines uh, okay, that we used to take into account uh, for assigning uh, the projects, uh, the academic projects, uh, to our students. And this is a story that we follow since 1999. So it's uh, 20 years uh, of story. This is the National Gallery of Arts. of uh, good quality education, but also of passion. And um, during this event uh, that uh, takes place uh, every year at the end of the academic year, we used to invite all the company partners uh, of our network, uh, which is very rich in Umbia also, and they see the garments, uh, see the collections, also the projects of our graduates. Uh, and after the show, while having uh, something for drinking, they come directly to us and they ask for uh, that designer to arrange for a job interview or that designer because they like the, the garment, uh, the piece of the collection, the, the video uh, that they have, um, they have seen uh, during the fashion show. So this happens uh, that we have a very good uh, connection network uh, of companies. So we have uh, the main quarter in Perugia and we set up a branch some years ago in Shanghai City of Fashion. These are some of our international cooperation. We are in um, Los Angeles, Vancouver, uh, Kuwait, uh, where actually we have two uh, graduates uh, teaching as uh, fashion instructors. And also we have uh, uh, some connections here in India with some companies uh, from the fashion department and so for uh, kitchenware and some other uh, areas, um, such as Wonder Chef, uh, Kucha 7 and others. This is, our, uh, uh, this is some information of Perugia. Perugia is a very convenient uh, city. It's very convenient uh, comparing the life cost uh, um, uh, with respect to uh, uh, thinking about Milan, Rome, Florence, um, and you are well located, strategically located in the city, in the center of Italy. Two hours uh, train, you get to Rome. Two and a half, uh, you get to Milan with a fast train. One and a half, uh, you are in Florence. Three hours, you are in Venice. So, Every event, international event, Salone del Mobile, Milan Fashion Week, uh, PT uh, in Florence, any event uh, when it comes to design and fashion is uh, totally reachable in one day. So you can go and get back uh, without uh, overnight, without spending uh, the night there. So as I told you, we have uh, 20 years uh, of uh, good relationships, network with companies. We are very... Uh, in a very good relationship uh, with many companies. Here in the back you see Ferrari. Uh, here we are um, with our students uh, at Ferrari Mansion and uh, we had this great opportunity many times uh, uh, to see the internal uh, production plant uh, of Ferrari, which sounds maybe, I don't know, normal, but it's not, because the only way to enter the production plant of Ferrari is, uh, which one? Any answer? When are you allowed to enter the production plant, in your idea, in your opinion? 
if you buy <laughs> if you buy a Ferrari, yes, a Ferrari car, which is pretty expensive. <laughs> if not, we are very good friends, friends of the head of uh, human resources of Ferrari Italy, so we can enter. So these are some of our courses. Um, I'd like to show you something about the master in fashion management we are going to start on October. This is our job placement rate. Job placement rate is very good because in a couple of months, thanks to all the connection that we have with the companies in Umbria and also outside, we can place our students, our graduate, in a couple of months. Sometimes we have the opposite problem because in the middle of year, companies call, phone, uh, used to phone, and they search for some um, um, job opportunities they have, but we have no one because all the uh, previous graduates and they are already working so the other graduates are not ready because the session is in June so we have no one to send. This is the first uh, uh, module. Our Master in Fashion Management is divided in three modules. The first one is about manage management, of sure, for sure. Uh, the director is Alfredo, the smart guy I told you about. He is uh, 80 years old and he worked with uh, Giorgio Armani personally. And uh, um, these are some of the subjects that we are going to teach to the enrolled students. Uh, the goal is to give you an understanding uh, of how luxury market companies placed themselves in the market. So to give you the opportunity to ideate your own brand identity strategy. But let's move on. The second module is, the may, uh, is maybe more important because it's all about uh, hands-on. So it's a practical module. I told you that uh, our excellent uh, uh, department is the knitting uh, and also the uh, tailoring uh, and the leather work. Uh, so we teach during these months uh, how to hands-on uh, do the knitting. Uh, so some special uh, um, advices for the knitting and you will uh, uh, work directly on the machines that we have in our campus. Then uh, we um, go to the third module, which is the last one. This uh, is a trainship. The trainship is guaranteed inside the master course, the year master course, 100%. And uh, it's uh, in a company partner of our network. So before getting started, we have uh, uh, many interviews with the enrolling student to understand uh, the student's need, um, the student's desire, uh, where he wants, she wants to get involved to uh, for the future. And then we arrange for the best department, for the best company suitable for the student, the specific student. So we tailor uh, the internship uh, on the student's needs. It uh, starts uh, in October and then it ends uh, in July. So some, some of, uh, of Istituto de Italiano Design. We have uh, uh, had a 20 year story reaching awards, uh, reaching uh, honorable mentions, uh, but I would like to take you directly to some pictures. These are some of the awards that we have gained uh, during these 20 years. Uh, Expo 2015, we had the chance to represent our region, uh, and then uh, a talent for shoe. This uh, uh, graduate for, uh, from uh, Instituto Italiano Design, he won an internship uh, at Sergio Rossi Shoes. And you can imagine uh, the incredible opportunities uh, that you would gain after an internship there to stay there or to maybe to move to some other luxury fashion brands. Some of the corporations here and in Italy and in the worldwide area. This is a 2005, the Shanghai Furniture Exhibition asked us to be in the awarding panel. Then we have um, a 50th anniversary of LS, this company that now is in London. Um, it's a company into textile, obviously. And this uh, student, uh, he won uh, this uh, competition, this concourse, uh, con contest. Uh, and uh, then he moved uh, for an internship in London. And then he stayed there. Uh, and he's still there. But now he opened up uh, his new brand, so his new business. And he is demanding us for interns. This is a contest awarded by Save the Children, and these two students won the contest uh, with this advertisement campaign, which, uh, is, uh, which deals uh, with uh, violence against children. 
and the, the, re the writing means that certain won't remain open. So we have uh, an interesting project. This is the thesis uh, project of this guy, this student, uh, Michael Dembiski. He's from Russia. And he did the uh, designs for this exhibition stall uh, just to show you how we work during our years. And uh, the Concetti company, they wanted to realize the exhibition stall uh, and they realized it and brought it in a Milan uh, exhibition, which is EPAC. So this guy, before graduating, he went to Milan to showcase his own designs uh, and then he got a lot of clients and after graduating, he started up his new business in Milan uh, with a lot of clients uh, and hiring two persons immediately. This is another award, and this guy won a talent for shoe, so the internship at the Sergio Rossi luxury brand shoes. Then we have the Expo project. This is a strategic design project. Students, um, before designing, they did a lot of research, research on materials. The same way the fashion department did the research on the innovative material for the sustainable collection. Here they studied that the property of uh, these ceramics, which was produced in Umbria also, because Umbria is very excellent also for ceramics uh, district, um, the ceramics uh, had the properties to preserve the freshness of the artisanal beer. So what happened? They discovered that into these, uh, um, these bottles, uh, the beer continued the fermentation process. So the flavor was much better than the beginning. And this project was deemed to be so interesting uh, from the region that the region asked us uh, to represent them during one year in the Expo project, in the Expo exhibition. So one year we were there with a lot of companies uh, in the Italian pavilion showcasing our designers, uh, our students' project. These are some of the brands uh, our uh, uh, students uh, work for. Here you have Lorena Antoniazzi. Lorena Antoniazzi you may not know about, you are not aware maybe, but it's an emerging brand, a very fast piece growing brand, textile industry, and it's in Perugia. They are opening up branches in and stores all over the world. They are in Malaysia, in Asia, in the States, in Canada, and they're hiring very much. So they keep demanding for, uh, for interns and for people. So here we have uh, the first uh, designer uh, of Primigi company, which is a pretty much uh, uh, interesting company in Italy when it comes to designing the shoes uh, for children. And uh, this guy graduated uh, in um, 15 years ago, and now he's the leading designer. And he keeps uh, uh, demanding for interns, demanding for people working from our graduates. Here we have a brand which is Marilina. Have you ever heard about Marilina? Okay, let's change. Have you ever heard about Stella McCartney? I guess. So Stella McCartney is produced by Marilina Company in Umbria. Our graduate, Ivana, she's the product, uh, product coordinator for Stella McCartney in Marilina. In Marilina. What happens? Marilina has these uh, brands uh, they work with, uh, and after a couple of years that the graduate is working as a product coordinator for the brand, so for Stella McCartney, happens that the graduate jump out and skip, go directly, she goes directly working for the brand, for Stella McCartney. So they keep demanding us for graduates because after a couple of years they run out of because they went, gone, uh, went working for the brand directly. These are uh, some of the other brands that our graduates work for. This is Fabiana Filippi. Fabiana Filippi is deemed to be the next one Brunello Cucinelli. They are also growing very fast. A couple of our graduates uh, has been, uh, have been um, uh, hired as, uh, in the style office just now, some months ago, and so they keep uh, opening stores uh, everywhere. This is a, um, a graduate of some years ago. She's in London. She is uh, engaged with Burberry for more than one year. So other, and here we have the Vancouver Fashion Week. Last year, on October, we showcased uh, in the Vancouver Fashion Week with our graduate uh, capture collection. And the capture collection was so interesting that uh, we left with two baggages and we got back with 
zero packages because there were a lot of uh, buyers uh, there were GQ and Vogue you can imagine what uh, like uh, showcasing uh, with international uh, uh, background you would have uh, in this uh, type of uh, contest this type of environment this is a slant uh, uh, sorry this is a piece of the Vancouver Fashion Week I'll go on but you can see the uh, Vancouver Fashion Week Itali Instituto Italiano Design collection video on uh, YouTube if you want. So also this guy, he used a lot of materials which are sustainable and innovative. He used them, you, I don't know if you see now, there's an uh, orange, uh, uh, like um, something which is uh, similar to a stall. And this stall is made out of the waste of food. So something which, which is 100% uh, recyclable. fashion show in uh, the National uh, Art uh, Gallery. Uh, we have uh, the international pianist. She's based uh, in, in New York and uh, she came directly from the States uh, to play the piano to um, our fashion, uh, fashion design uh, course uh, fashion show. Here you can see a very special mansion which is Rocca Paulina. Rocca Paulina is an ancient castle Ancient Castle in, um, in Perugia, city center, and we had this great opportunity to showcasing uh, here. So they made up this capture collection from the denim, but the inspiration was the high renaissance, the rich high renaissance and the poverty of denim. So this contrast. You can just see the showcasing. These are um, some, uh, something more about our students' portfolio. The mansion is obviously in Italy. And this, uh, we have uh, a student, he, uh, after graduating immediately, he was called for this uh, magazine, which is Bordeaux. It's mm -hmm. the same, uh, same publishing group of uh, Vogue and other magazine, fashion magazine, and they wanted to give the cover to this guy. So he had the capture collection, the cover page, and then many pages inside also. You can see. This is another student's uh, portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's uh, more or less more in knitting. She is uh, working for Fabiana Filippi now. The company that I told you about, they are very fast growing.
Okay, so last things, um, I'd like to show you uh, something about our uh, professor very shortly. These are some of our professors. You can see Alfredo, I told you about them. The interesting thing of Alfredo is not that much the knowledge, which is huge, obviously, but uh, are the stories that this uh, exciting man is uh, able to tell you. I tell you something. Um, some time ago, uh, he told me, you know how Brunello Cucinelli first uh, um, launched uh, his brand, uh, how he gave this uh, successful image for, ta for taking the luxury piece of the market. Just tell me. I was expecting like uh, brand strategy and data and something like this. He told me, at that time, you used to have a phone, a simple, ordinary phone. Not a smartphone, not internet, not Google, nothing existing, okay, of these uh, new technologies that we have, only the phone. So. The clients uh, used to call him uh, like this. Uh, yes, hello, I would like to speak uh, to Brunello Cucinelli. Is it possible? Then Brunello Cucinelli speaking. Yes, hello, sir. Let me be sure that he's not involved in a meeting. Put uh, on hold. After six, seven minutes, picked up the phone. Yes, he's free. Just one moment that I'll pass you through. Hello, Mr. Brunello Cucinelli speaking. Always same person, obviously. Always Brunello Cucinelli, but giving the impression that there was something very big on, me, on behind, behind the phone, on the back. So this is one of the small strategies that Alfredo is uh, going to show you. Another one, um, when Brunello Cucinelli, she, he told me, when Brunello Cucinelli, he told me, um, had uh, some meetings uh, outside, so, um, they, they used to move like in five, six people and get a room in a hotel. They didn't get a cheap hotel and five rooms. What he used to get was a very luxury hotel, but uh, all the people fitting in one room. So the price was the same, but coming to the clients, when the clients had to uh, reach Brunello Cucinelli for a meeting, they didn't have to go to a cheap hotel. They had to go to the Star Register. And you can see, you can imagine that the impact, the impression that you would give to the client is totally different. Because you are giving an impression, an idea of a product which is very luxury, so very desirable. So these are some of the um, funny things uh, that Alfredo would tell you uh, during the Master in Fashion Management course. So we have Marzia, she's the Global HR Director and Retail at Valentino. She is uh, in Florence and she comes uh, for uh, giving the lecture. So she's still um, hired there. Then we have Nella. Nella retired because she is 75 years old, uh, super uh, uh, lovely lady. And she spent uh, more than uh, 60, 55 years um, as a chief of the knitting department in the factory for Valentino, for Chanel, for Armani. One of our memories is that she was in Rome and she was uh, working for the council there, the Braceschi council and also for Valentino. And before the fashion show, she was uh, to adjust the garments on the model directly, personally with Mr. Valentino. So she was very happy to have this great chance to work directly, personally with Mr. Valentino. So we have Alessia, she's the World Area Manager for Celine, but also she worked in the past for Max Mara, for Marni, for Lujo and other brands, also Brunello Cucinelli. Then we have Simone, Simone was a manager for Balmain Paris and other, other professors, just some, some of our professors. This is a guy, he is Andrea, he spent uh, 10 years uh, in uh, uh, the retailing department of uh, Valentino, Hogan, uh, Todd's, uh, Dolce Gabbana, and so on. And now he is the head of uh, retail and visual mer merchandising at Lorano Antoniazzi. Lorano Antoniazzi, again, is the, um, is the brand that I told you about uh, from Perugia, which is moving very fast uh, all over the world, opening stores and branches. So we have uh, um, a shot of the presence of Lorano Antoniazzi Perugia-based company uh, all around the world. 
We have an interview of um, Andrea giving it in Instituto Italiano Design. Today at Radio Design we have a very special guest. We are with Andrea Mirabassi, fashion retail expert and retail manager at Stern International. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, then we have Sara. If you uh, fancy to see some of the interviews, everything is online in Google, in um, YouTube uh, channels of Instituto Italiano Design, or uh, uh, in our social uh, network. Then we have Sara, she's the head of visual inter uh, merchandising, uh, has been uh, for many companies. She studied in London, uh, fashion design, and then she worked for Esprit, and um, she started working, she moved from uh, London to Milan, and then to other brands, and she also teaches. She teaches uh, uh, fashion uh, merchandising, visual merchandising, sorry. Okay. Then we have Andrea, and uh, other professors. I would like to conclude with this uh, um, idea that actually the Italian consulate was uh, already speaking about uh, this idea of the perfect match. What is the perfect match? You from India, you have uh, this Indian beautiful background uh, which uh, is rich in crafts uh, also and you also speak the language which is very important when it comes to fashion because a lot of fashion companies uh, they have their production plants here in India but you miss something. Some days ago, some months ago, sorry, I was speaking to a, um, a company, uh, with a company which is uh, here in Mumbai, and they told me like, you know Benedetta, we would like to, um, to grow up, uh, not only to work for the high fashion brands, uh, to deliver the, our products, but to do something on our own. But, in Italy, but we have a big problem, because we are very good at embroideries, but we are not as good as Italian guys at stitching. So the stitching part, the tailoring part, also the knitting part is missing. So he told me, what about having a person with an Indian background, but also that had the Italian background, which in India is missing. So the tailoring, the stitching, and the knitting. So from India, to Italy, you would be the perfect combination, okay, for a fashion industry brand, because you are, would have uh, both and both, uh, and uh, gain this uh, competence that um, you may need for working in the high fashion brands. So, um, uh, attending our Master in Fashion Management, uh, um, the students would have uh, uh, like a pass, uh, which can be used in three different ways. First way, you get your uh, diploma, you decide to spend uh, your time in Italy because you enjoy Italy, you like Perugia, you want to go to Milan, to Rome, and et cetera, et cetera. You can do that. So after the uh, internship that you gain during 100% uh, the master course, uh, you would have the opportunity to work uh, directly in a company in Italy, first. Second, second option, you are fed up with Italy, you want to change, uh, okay, because you have seen everything, so you want to change, you want to go to Europe, Spain, France, any country is not an issue because you already have a pass from the Italian country to stay in Europe. So it's a pass for all over the Europe for you. Third option, you want to get back, you want to get back to India. So you will get back to India with, a, with something more which is makes you very special because it's a uh, knowledge about the Italian crafts they made in Italy, knitting, tailoring part, and uh, leather work, uh, something which uh, is very good in Italy. We are very good at in Italy. So you will uh, get back with something which is very desirable, which is very stunning for a company, and then you will uh, get into your uh, fashion careers. Okay, so uh, very thanks uh, uh, to everyone. And if there's uh, any question, I'm here. And uh, also the Italian consulate, she is here. Uh, so we are very happy to uh, answer. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for coming and giving such wonderful session. Like, you know, you spoke about your institute, but along with that, you gave a lot of information you know, mainly how the uh, fashion industry works, you know, so we are also working so much on sustainability, but after meeting you, like I'm sure the students have got a lot of confidence and they know that they are also on the right track.
yeah so thank you so much and i would also it's a wonderful institute i could see that if anybody you know uh, interested because they are the final year students interested you can uh, definitely since they are here you can ask them in detail you know but i'm sure it's a one year program and then is it under university i just wanted to ask you is it under university like uh, or it's a private how is it uh, private university okay okay and then after studying here uh, do they get uh, like a work permit or uh, like you know i i could see that in masters after the training i don't know there are three modules so i'm sure it must be of 3 3 months or 4 4 months i don't know how it is how many weeks yeah they should get an um permitted visa a visa for studying and after that uh, they can stay in italy for uh, job seeking purposes maybe uh, the consulate is the person yeah like how long they can how long they can stay there for job seeking and then can stay with your family and and go back to india you can always consider the possibility of of a job in a, in an italian company here or in networking with italian companies here. 